You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where every week Marta and Anna abandon their five children, two partners, and one cat to make a show especially for you. An artist, a challenge, a bullshit, a wisdom, and a surprise. Tune in and feel the magic of five. Hello, everyone. This is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got Five Options show. Yes, it is, if you haven't noticed, because our intro was on. Marta, I'm very happy to see you here again. We were just guests on another radio show that actually is played Uh, exactly in the same time uh, frame as ours, but on Thursdays. So I have to say it's good to be back on a host seat, but it was fun to be a guest, wasn't it? I really enjoyed being a guest. It's so much easier than being a host. Super easier. <laughs> Actually, now I feel a bit stressed because today I will be leading this show and I have to be mindful about the time and we have two guests, guys. So we are super fortunate today. And uh, I I feel a little bit love, like of this uh, you know, like stress. I think people call it stress. And it's so weird because it was so relaxed with Maunus. So guys, if you want to hear us as guests on the show called Dennis Sir, Help. Dennis Help is, yeah. Torsdag med Magnus Madsen. Which translates to Thursday with Magnus Madsen. Yep. Then please tune in on Thursday at two o'clock, exactly as you tune in for our show. Um, uh, I think we provide the live stream link everywhere. And also 98.7 FM in Orhus area. Yeah. And then afterwards, of course, Maunus will release it as a podcast. So, so you can catch us there. Yeah. Yes, for those of you who are actually watching us, I think it would be nice if uh, we introduce that gentleman that is uh, sitting uh, here uh, in between us. If you're listening to us on the radio or on podcast, you could just go by. But we do actually have a guest here at the studio with us. Yes. And uh, yes, I will actually make a proper introduction because I said that we have two guests, but you can see only one guest. And we have two guests because today we have two very important questions that I want to have answered. And one is, what kind of music would emerge if you combine a pair of renowned Danish electronic producers with two of the most exciting jazz musicians around? And Anatoly, that's not a question for no, you, so you should be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And What the <laughs> second very important question we have today is, why are the expats the unhappiest in the happiest country in the world, which is Denmark? And that will be the question, of course, for you, Anatoly. Hello, Anatoly. Great Hello. to have Hello. you here. Hello, uh, Anna and uh, and Marta. Thank yes. You. And Dennis. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much for thank you so much for the for the invitation. We are super excited to have you here. I actually have a couple of things to say about you before we will jump into your part. So Anatoly is an expert of a, on a Danish culture, and he actually is a lecturer who is. Uh, yeah, having a lecture. I think it's called a lecture, not a public speech. It's a lecture. Well, it's a lecture. It's a, it's a talk. Yes, that is called a Danish culture is an extreme. Is it right, correct? Yeah, yes. that's called an extreme is, is an inverted commas, of course. Of course. So that's the title. Yeah, that's the yes. title of the lecture. Yeah. So that's, that's quite, uh, I would say, catchy and a bit controversial title for it. And you are also an art, uh, art author of two and soon to be three mm. articles in a series that is called Why Are the Expats Than Happiest in the Happiest Country in the World? And I have read your first two articles and I have also seen a lot of reactions and a lot of comments. And I also uh, understood from comments that you got also private messages from people mm. and so on. So my first question before we will go to the second guest would be, did you expect that reaction? Well, uh, in many ways, I I sort of didn't because the what I was just simply doing was pointing out to to a report. Actually, it's six reports mm -hmm. that were published in the last six years from the Expat Insider, which is the largest expat organization uh, in the world, and they have I think uh, a bit over 2.4 million members. And uh, what they do, they make they make some kind of surveys um, uh, every year where they find out. They have a lot of questions, but among other things, they also find out the well-being uh, of expats worldwide. 
Uh, and they'll also they look, they also have a methodology and a typology as to what is an expert, when is an expert an expert, and so on, because probably there are those differences between probably between an expert, a foreigner, immigrant, and you have refugees and so, so on. But they have that. And those reports are published, they are public, they are there every year. And I simply just noticed something. And what I noticed mm -hmm. is Denmark, I could say also the, the Nordic countries, in many ways, they score the best when it comes, for example, to work and life balance, to uh, family life and so on, so on, safety. But at the same time, they also score as poorest in uh, settling in. I mean, the hardest place in the world for expats to settle in. And when we say to settle in as a, as a topic, there are also other subtopics as, for example, finding friends, uh, feeling at home and so on. So that, of, that is just simply what I... Uh, I kind of noticed and I mm -hmm. wrote, I don't know, three paragraphs on that on LinkedIn and it was uh, 17,000 views and uh, suddenly it just exploded in a way. Yeah. I saw a Polzikin wrote, I saw some, um, some interviews with other experts and somehow it went all over the place. But otherwise, these reports have always been there, public. I mean, they're public reports. Yeah. And of course, this discussion and debate started uh, as to, I think in many ways, it's also the title. We have to sort of uh, consider that some people do read only titles. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, or headlines and such. That so they don't correct. go into details because, of course, I say we should look at it critically. What does that mean? And so on and so mm -hmm. on. But it's still, I think it is quite interesting. Why is that experts uh, claim or say, uh, if we are to take this serious, uh, that they, it's so difficult to find friends, to settle in and feel at home? Mm -hmm. I found out uh, also acquaintances and, and friends who have lived here 15, 20 years from, and, and I was surprised also in their comments that I know personally that they actually said, yes, we have acquaintances, we know people as such, but we don't really have friends. And this to me kind of came into like, okay, so it's just not, uh, you know, it came from many, and of course, a lot of people have a lot of things in their heart, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's also more sort of, uh, you know, personal stories. And then they wrote to me, you know, directly over LinkedIn. Okay, uh, so. That, yeah. So basically, this is how it happens. So guys, if you are interested, what else Anatoly found? And other questions regarding happiness in the in the happiest country in the world, or rather unhappiness, then you have to definitely stay with us. <laughs> but now we will actually come back to the first question that Anatoly unfortunately cannot answer. And Marta, I'm also sure you cannot answer what will happen if we get to Danish producers and jazz musicians. And I can, you know, get some funky answers for you. Yes. I don't know if they will be any sort of correct, but... Uh... But I think we will just leave it for, uh, for Niklas Knudsen from Kalaha, because that will be our... Uh, music, musical musical guest and uh, we will call him in a moment so he will join us over the phone but in the meantime I believe that Dennis can hit us with our jingle artist of the week Superman music brings to you artist of the week So we are now calling uh, Niklas, and I am pretty sure that my embarrassing ringtone will be here. Hello? Hello, Niklas. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yes, this is Anna and Marta from You've Got Five Options. And thank you yeah. so much for being our musical guest for this episode. And we are looking at your website, and I see that you won a Danish Music Award in 2017. Yes. That yes. that is uh, very very impressive and actually I don't know if you know but uh, Dave who has uh, get us in con contact for this show he told me that you are his favorite Danish band. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I have to say that uh, he surprises me because he never told me that and then he's like I got you my favorite Danish band. So, uh, Niklas, I think first I will ask you a very obvious question, because when I mentioned before that we will have a guest from Kalaha, and everyone thought that it has something to do with the uh, very famous strategic board game, uh, please yes. tell us why did you call the name Kalaha? Yes, the, the very old board game called Kalaha uh, is actually a very simple game 
You can put some stones in some sand and you can play the game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the game is very complex. If you want to win the, the game, it's very complex to figure out where to put the stones and stuff like that. So it's a very simple game, very easy to set up, but also it's a very complex game. And that's kind of the same with the Kala's music. It's in, in a way, it's very simple. And in another way, it's very complex. And furthermore, you know, I, li I like to play games. Mm -hmm. And um, people have been playing games, you know, a thousand years, for a thousand years, and people have been playing music for a thousand years. So they also have like a relation there, games and music, in my opinion. Okay, that's a, that's a very a philosophical answer, I have to say. I did not <laughs> expect that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it is. I, I have to say I have not mastered the, the Kalahada game. Marta, you know something about it? Oh, yes, I do play it. I have three kids uh, and I yeah. play uh, Kalahada there for many times <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. all of them have actually been enjoying playing that game. So uh, I'm yeah. pretty familiar with the game. I'm also pretty sure that you could, you could win with me very easily. Easily. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we, we should set but it up. <laughs> we'll set it up some, someday, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I have actually at the beginning of the show asked a question. Uh, what kind of music would emerge if you combine a pair of renowned Danish electronic producers with two of the most exciting jazz musicians around? And I think you know that question very well because the answer is Kalaha. Oh, but, yeah. uh, but I have to say that uh, when I listen to your music, one thing is quite striking. You don't don't have vocals right involved yeah. it's only uh, uh, it's only instrumental music so i would like to ask you if i would go to see you live what could i expect because of course there is no vocalist so it's only instruments but what 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 kind of experience will i get to a carrier concert you could ex expect like a lot of energy mm -hmm. a lot of uh, dance energy both like uh, up beats, but also like slow beats. And then at the same time, you could uh, experience like improvisation and very creative musician kind of uh, communicating at the same time. So it's like uh, we're communicating, but we're also playing some sort of uh, dance, danceable, energetic music. But I have to tell you also that we actually did some vocal uh, tracks and the next single is like a vocal track with a Turkish singer. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and we're actually trying to maybe get to Turkey and play some some um, festivals over there because we have mm -hmm. like this Turkish singer who and this tune was played a lot on Spotify in Turkey. Okay, that that yeah. sounds like a good deal to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, I actually have seen your videos from the live performances, and they are quite cool. You also have a light show, right? Yeah. Exactly. So that's that's another thing that uh, I think some people could appreciate. Oh and, yeah, of course. Yeah. And we will be playing one of your songs very soon. Before I will ask you three other very very uh, <laughs> different questions. Uh, so then, okay. guys, you will be also able to experience a bit of a uh, Kalaha music on the on the show. But of course, you know, Christmas is coming, and this show will be actually aired on 13 of December. So please tell us what did you ask Santa for Christmas. I asked Santa for uh, a very long life. I want to be 1,000 years old. 1,000. Hmm. Yeah. That could be a lonely life, you know? <laughs> Saying yeah, goodbye. I, don't, I, don't, I think they <laughs> made a movie about this. I think it was Highlander. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay. I, I can understand that. And of course, as you are a musician and the Christmas fever have started, please tell me what is, in your opinion, the absolutely worst Christmas song ever? I mean, I don't want to say some tunes are, are, are worse, but I'm very tired of Maria Carey's uh, <laughs> All I Want for Christmas because I hear it all the time. So it's not only because it's a... It's okay, an okay song. It's just a matter that you hear it like 10 times a day. So I'm really, really sick of that tune. So, so uh, yeah. all you want for Christmas is not Mariah Carey. Is it not Mariah Carey? It's not a Mariah Carey. You don't want her anymore on the radio. Yeah. At least not with this a song, little, of A little course. break for Mar Mariah Carey. Maybe play some more John Lennon. Okay, that's a, that's a very interesting answer. They made yeah. a Christmas song, right? The Beatles, or they didn't? Oh, well, he did a, a Christmas song called yeah. uh, Happy, "Happy Christmas, Happy New Year." War's over. 
Ah. And also, yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of like great Christmas songs, like old Christmas songs, but they don't play them anymore. They play All I Want for Christmas with Maria Carey and Chris Rea coming back to for Christmas. Oh, Those coming two home tunes there. Yeah, coming home for Christmas. They're playing it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's is, that same. is correct. Plus, George yeah. Michael, last Christmas I gave you my heart, of course. Yeah, I've heard that also, yeah. but that's a, I, I have a, I, I like that tune for some reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so now the last question before we will play yeah. the song is, and that ties up to the theme of our program today, which we will be uh, continuing with Anatoly, who is our guest in the studio. But please tell me, Niklas, as a Dane, do you believe that Denmark is indeed the happiest country in the world? I don't know, because I've not been, I've only been living in Denmark my whole life. Yes. So I've been visiting other countries. I've been living one year in United States, and I've been, you know, visiting many countries, but I've never been living there for a whole life. Okay. So I don't know how it feels to live in, let's say, Africa or America or China. I don't know how it feels. The only thing I can say is I really like to be here in Denmark. I like Denmark. And from what I've seen all over the world, Denmark is a place where you can live a very good and happy life. Okay. And with yeah. that answer, uh, I will end our little interview. So please tell us why did you so choose the song that you chose? It's Mama. And please tell me how to pronounce it. Mama Nguma. Yes. Why this song? I like this song. I think it's a happy song that uh, you can dance to, but you can also just sit and listen and, you know, hear all the, the, the rhythms and notes and sounds. I like this. Okay, so guys, with a special dedication for you, uh, Mama Nguma. Nguma. Yes, thank you very much, Niklas. Thank you and thank have you. a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.
that was Kalaha with Mama Ninga. Now I wish I would have actually uh, uh, someone to pronounce it for me, but a very nice and very lively song. So that was great. And now we are crossing over to our challenge of the week. Challenging challenge of the week. So, guys, I am fully aware that we are basically just uh, touching the tip of an iceberg today because this topic can be discussed as a separate season of a radio show. But today we are discussing uh, unhappiness in the happiest country in the world, especially from the expat perspective. And before I will tell you what the challenge of the week is, I would like to quote um, something from your article, Anatoly, if that's okay. Yeah. In the expat's eyes, Denmark is one of the best countries in the world to have a family with a great options for child care. It is very safe, highly digitalized, and it provides an amazing balance between work and leisure. But on an absolutely different extreme, it is the worst country when it comes to personal happiness, feeling at home, friendliness, and finding friends. Denmark is overall the hardest place in the world to settle in, with a score of 63 out of 64 countries in 2019. It is precisely the category of easy of settling in that has been dragged Denmark da- dragging Denmark down. In fact, the yearly expat insider survey reports of 2018, 17, 16, 15 and 14 show the same. Denmark is top most difficult place in the world to settle in. What one could endlessly discuss, what is personal happiness or our uh, or own experience as an expat in Denmark. However, if we are to take the survey seriously, I think it is intriguing that Denmark, according to the 2019 World Happiness Report, has world's second happiest citizens right after Finland. While we know that Denmark has been a champion in scoring top of the list when it comes uh, to being (coughs) the happiest country in the world, that in itself is a contradiction and it begs the question. Why are the expats then happiest in the happiest country in the world? So, challenge of the week is, from your research, but also your personal stand, please tell us what do you find as the biggest challenge for expats to feel happy in the happiest country in the world? (coughs) Marta, are you okay? Well, I'm so sorry. I have a small cold. (laughs) <laughs> and my throat is now acting out, so I'm really sorry for no, I'm trying a... to be hiding as far as possible from the microphone, but I can't hold back. You can try under <laughs> under the table. <laughs> as you can see here in the studio, we have a truly live experience of how it would go. So, But coming back to the challenge, so what do you think is the biggest challenge for expats to actually feel happy in the happiest country in the world? Well, also... The way the way the reports uh, the report shows, and also some way they they, they go also on details. It's uh, it's about uh, you know uh, making contact, mm-hmm. uh, being in contact, this uh, social contact that perhaps it's uh, it's uh, in this case or it's something that is very typical to to Northern Europe is difficult to do or difficult to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, Danes uh, make friendships from from very young age, and they are very conscious about their their friendships and their friends. So they have perhaps uh, in a way would say they have few good friends from from an early age uh, and if they are supposed that they would they would become a friend that's something really how should they say they need to really manage that as such and in, in this is just one point on the other side uh, privacy is such a it's it's a sacred in Denmark it's really hard to come uh, to get in to get close to Danes in that sense mm-hmm. um, and this is perhaps in a way what the report also shows uh, what is interesting is that uh, uh, it points out to the that that comparing to the to the global average, 
uh, there are higher chances that experts make friends with other experts mm-hmm. uh, than with the with the locals. In co- I cannot remember now exactly the percentage, but still the the global average is much bigger than the the initial one. And it goes on uh, like that. There are of course uh, many sort of reasons you could say why, and could say subjective reasons people might mm-hmm. might find it difficult. But but it is there is something there. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, and in many ways, of course, the way I take it further also on the articles is that I try to explain somehow uh, that it is uh, it is uh, or the root of that is is or the answers in that isn't isn't the Danish culture. What I call mm-hmm. Danish culture is an extreme, in a sense that the expectations in compar- in comparison to the whole world in Denmark are very different. Uh, let's say if you go now, I don't know, um, out in a bar and sit and you start talking to someone, they might think, I mean, we don't just do that, right? You don't just uh, start talking, they might think you are, um, I don't know, unless you have some business or something as such, yeah. but you don't just uh, start get into contact with someone. So the way you reach people is very different than any other place in the world or many other places in the world. Mm-hmm associations, organizations, it could be sport, it could be politics, it could be anything else, the way you get to people. And and in many ways, I think this has been very challenging for, 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 the- for, for expats. Of course, uh, everybody has something on there. I also think a lot of things are, I mean, Danes are also misunderstood uh, mm-hmm. very often. Uh, I remember someone, of course, I'm not going to use names here, but I remember someone who... who That's a pity. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone who told me that, that he got very, very sick at work, an expat, let's say, and none of his colleagues really, really, well, they asked them, him a little bit, but none of, none of uh, them came to, uh, I don't know, to hospital or came to see why he's sick. And he was thinking, I was seeing this as a very cold, distant uh, uh, way of doing things. Like mm-hmm. How come they don't care about him? But we know, for example, Denmark being sick is a private matter. It's a personal matter. Mm-hmm. You, it's it's private. It's nobody's business. You are allowed to be sick. Nobody is supposed to poke their nose. So, so in that sense, this is also what I try to do in this uh, mm-hmm. in these uh, articles as they come, where I look at, uh, as you saw the the last one, I looked at equality, uh, the one that comes on Sunday. I look at trust and how does that affect uh, mm-hmm. life? And and uh, again, I say it's an extreme uh, the degree of trust. Mm-hmm. We will actually yeah. go back to yeah. the to oh, the sorry. extreme. No, that's yeah. fine. You are making a very good teaser <laughs> for our wisdom of the week. But basically, so it, as I'm trying to paraphrase you now in a very mm-hmm. simple manner. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about the contact and the uh, easiness of making connections in the country with with also the local uh, with local community. But that's that's exactly what it uh, it points out. The report mm-hmm. it's that it's it's uh, it's quite difficult to to uh, well to make friends and so on mm-hmm. in a traditional uh, worldly way, mm-hmm. uh, and this is what they say. Uh, the experts say in the survey mm-hmm. uh, that they have acquaintances very often, but not friends as such. Okay, uh, and and perhaps this is where this uh, source of unhappiness, as we say, and of course it is a paradox. Denmark has scored top happiest country in the last four decades. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, so so the way uh, I forgot the name, the one you asked him, and that's what pretty much general opinion is. People, Danes are generally quite happy about their country. Mm-hmm. In fact, this is very interesting. I don't know what with the translation of selglö. They are so they are so uh, self content. They are self content. They are so so happy with their country that in percentage, and this comes from a sociologist from Copenhagen University, Peter Gundelau, he's very famous, who looked into the Danish uh, values, and he looked mm-hmm. at Sweden. Uh, Netherlands and Denmark, they if and when they were asked about, uh, I mean, how happy or uh, would you choose your country over others? Sweden, Netherlands, Germany, they score somewhere there 15, 17. Denmark scores 65. Whoa.